On Friday's episode of uh, his HBO show, comedian Bill Maher said that abortion kind of is murder and that he's okay with that. And he said, I mean, there's 8 billion people in the world. I'm sorry, we won't miss you, speaking to the preborn children. And then he spoke to the uh, pro-choice people in the audience and he said, is that not your position if you're pro-choice? Here, he said the quiet part out loud. And he's refreshingly honest in the dishonesty of this whole abortion industry of killing innocent human beings at their most vulnerable stage in the womb. He's honest, though, in that he calls it what it is, murder. And he's also honest in that he acknowledges that the people who are working to stop abortion, that they're not doing it because they hate women. He acknowledges that. They are doing this simply because they want to protect babies. And that's what we are. We Christians today, like Christians in the first century of Rome, in the second century of Rome, um, we are opposing the culture of death, nihilism, cynicism, and disregard for human life. The early Christians did that. They stood out in the pagan society of their time. And we, like them, stand out in the pagan society of our time because we value life. We value babies. We value family. All of these things are gifts from God. We don't see babies as trash for the medical waste bin. We see them as images of God. And so we've come full point, uh, full circle in the this century of ours from the time of Adolf Hitler. Hitler made distinctions about people according to their ethnicity. And we have come to the point now where people like Bill Maher are actually uh, redeeming or rehabilitating Hitler because they're saying the same thing. Not according to the lines of ethnicity, like Hitler did against the Jews, but according to people and their stage of development. That's the key difference. You are not worthy of life because you're not as developed as I am. And that's where we are. That these beautiful, precious little children who maybe they're eight weeks in development, maybe they're eight months in development, but they're inconvenient for the powerful of this world. And the powerful of this world kill them. Say they're not human. Or acknowledge, in the case of Bill Maher, that they are human and that it is murder, but that they're going to do it anyways in the name of sexual liberation and false freedom. You know, if we're going to murder uh, surplus human beings, then where does it stop? I mean, if it is the um, inconvenient child that's six months in the womb and is going to interfere with you know, uh, the, the sexual liberation of a young couple or uh, of a single woman, or if it's going to interfere with the, um, I don't know, the, the uh, environmental ideology of those who believe that the world's overpopulated, then why not just open it all up? Why not also uh, target people who are outside of the womb? Let's say those like the Nazis who... Um, are genetically inferior, you know? Why not just uh, go all out like it, Maher does, who acknowledges that it's murder? Why not just go all out and say, you know what, we want full-blown eugenics. If you are mentally handicapped, if you have problems in your genes, we're just going to liquidate you so that you will never reproduce. And what about people who are elderly? Like you look up in Canada, uh, the elderly are offered medical assistance in dying all the time. You have a case in Quebec from a few days ago of a man who uh, went into the hospital and after two or three days developed really bad bed sores and they offered him death and he took it. I don't want to be a burden to others. So then if we open this up and we're going to eliminate human beings because they're inconvenient of their, based on their stage of development, they're pre-born, based on um, their genetic composition, 
Maybe then it's going to go in places that we can never possibly expect. Our elderly. Maybe it's those who believe things that I don't like. Maybe it's people who, uh, oh, I don't know, believe in God and a God who tells uh, his followers that they need to be fruitful and multiply. Isn't that a threat to this environmental movement? Maybe that people who believe in being fruitful, Jews and Christians, uh, will be the next target. This is where we are. We live in a world now in which the powerful have no moral restraint according to the divine and natural law as revealed to us by God in scripture and by God through nature. They are unmoored. They have cut the string. They are free falling and they are not restrained by anything. So do not think that you are free from their uh, grasp. My friends, things, however, can still be saved. They can be saved because we believe in a God who is a savior. And whereas um, these people who want to eliminate the inconvenient, whether it is a preborn child or an elderly grandparent, who want to eliminate them because they're in their way, we believe in a God who entered into history and who himself became a little child and who had to flee from a tyrant and who underwent the vulnerability of being stripped naked and being crucified by the most powerful regime the world knew up to that point. And we believe that by submitting ourselves to God's providential design, that through suffering, we can redeem the world. We can cooperate with God in redeeming the fallen world around us and turn lemons into lemonade. Join me, my friends, in denouncing the evil, exposing this darkness, but in surrendering ourselves to God. Stop sinning and start supplicating. We can still turn the ship around.